Hello. Welcome. It's Wednesday, September the 16th, 2020, and we continue our journey through the mini Bible studies as we prepare for Sunday worship We're using the lessons for Sunday uh, for this 16th Sunday after Pentecost, September 20th, 2020. And today I will read for you from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 21 through 30. First, the introduction, then the actual portion of the letter itself, and then some of my thoughts, uh, which today maybe you wouldn't have necessarily gotten out of the reading. And sometimes I just like to do that. I like to pull out things that um, may not be so obvious. And, they give you some different way of thinking about the reading. So Philippians 1, 21 to 30, Paul writes to the Philippians from prison. Though he is uncertain about the outcome of his imprisonment, he is committed to the ministry of the gospel and calls on the Philippians to live lives that reflect and enhance the gospel mission. Paul writes, For to me, Living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or and am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind, for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Here ends the reading. This second reading for Sunday starts with an impressive statement about life and death. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter during his imprisonment, as you heard in the introduction. And he was in Rome. It was likely sometime in the years between 61 and 63 AD. And his imprisonment is somewhat similar to a situation of being under house arrest. Although he would have had a military guard, uh, the Roman soldiers, that would have uh, also allowed him certain privileges. Some certain folks could come and visit him. Uh, for example, his student, Timothy, who we know there are two letters written to Timothy by Paul. And also Timothy probably helped him write this letter uh, maybe in thought and theology, but also maybe in actually writing the words down. Why is this information important? Paul's reflections in this letter, and specific to this particular section, are a response to the nearness of his death, which is a probable outcome of his imprisonment. And as we know, it is the end result of his imprisonment. Most scholars place his death in Rome just a few years later after writing this letter. And in today's reading, Paul provides an impressive re-evaluation of his death, which me, he may have thought would not happen before Jesus' return. And that leads to an appeal to the congregation that they too should be prepared to suffer for their faith in Jesus. Today's reading is actually 
just before or followed by that famous hymn that we know about that comes in chapter 2. And it's famous already, but in this letter it is a celebration of Jesus' humility until Jesus' own death and crucifixion. So this reading starts with this interesting and impressive statement. I want to reread it for you. So listen again. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. You know, we likely have heard those sentences so many times that we are desensitized to Paul writing about life and death. Yet for Paul, he is in the middle of, uh, if not a physical, an emotional life and death struggle. If you really want a raw, unfiltered response to what Paul is saying, try telling your loved ones sometime that you'd be better off dying because that means you would go to heaven and be with Jesus. And if your loved ones are like most people, they will likely object to that thought and, and maybe even be kind of harsh with you about saying something like that. Before I started as a pastor here at Redeemer, I spent about four years as a hospice chaplain. One of those years I spent in a hospice house, which was primarily the place where people went when they were in the last three, four days, maybe a week of their life. Many of the people that I had the privilege to spend their last days were, with were, as they would say, ready to go. Their children and grandchildren, however, they were not so ready for their loved one to go. They wanted them to fight death, try all of the machines, all of the medications available, do everything you have to do to stay here with us. And many times, those children and grandchildren became angry with the hospice staff for allowing their loved one to die. Most of our modern culture is dominated by countless efforts of making life more gratifying and fulfilling while eliminating the threat and the experience of death itself. In fact, many doctors consider a patient's death to be a failure. We tend to admire people who succeed in life and who live their lives to the fullest. Even most Christians would admit, well, yes, we do want to go to heaven. We're just not wanting it to happen anytime soon. Even though every single one of us will one day die, we fight against that happening. There are not too many people who would be role models for Paul's statement or idea that dying is gain. How could Paul possibly make such a statement 2,000 years ago? Well, we find part of the answer in his situation of imprisonment mentioned above. It came with the probability of death, and so it was appropriate for Paul to reflect on his own death as opposed to just continuing to live in some kind of state of denial. Another part of Paul, Paul's reasoning is his complete faith in Jesus Christ, that death is not the end, that Paul wholeheartedly believes that the physical death of this body is no more than a transition into new life in Christ. Can Paul's faith inspire others? Absolutely. 
Let me share with you a little bit of a story. In the spring of 1945, and most of you can probably relate to that, the last message that was written by a German theologian in the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was executed in a concentration camp in Nazi Germany, his last statement demonstrates a similar kind of confidence that he may have been inspired by Paul. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer writes, For me, this is the end, but also a beginning. With him, I believe in the principle of our universal Christian brotherhood, which rises above all national interests, and that our victory is certain. Now, I don't think he was talking about the victory of Germany in the war or the victory of those who were anti-Hitler. I think he was talking about the victory of Jesus Christ on the cross and over death and sin. For our perspectives on death, the centeredness on the resurrected Jesus can make a big difference. It turns typical human perspectives on life upside down. Attitudes about living life to the fullness suddenly become questionable. The cliche that the one who dies with the most toys wins becomes immature. The quest for more material possessions suddenly sounds kind of foolish. Like someone once said, you do not see moving trucks behind the hearse as they're heading to the cemetery. And God asks one rich man in the gospel according to Luke, you will die this very night, then who will get everything you worked for? Now the point here is not about a vow of poverty. It's about choosing to make the first thing first. What do we prioritize as the first thing? Paul has come to realize that there is nothing in this life that has a higher priority than his faith and commitment to Jesus, not even life itself. That is how Paul can say, for to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. Thank you for joining me today in this somewhat difficult topic as we consider uh, and continue these mini Bible studies looking at the readings for this Sunday, the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, September 20th, 2020. Take care, have a great day, and God bless.